It's another start of the F1 season and to appreciate how good looking modern F1 cars are, let's remember the start of the 2014 F1 season when F1 cars looked like that. How did this happen and why did teams design strange noses like this? It all started in 1990, when Tyrrell found out that a raised nose allows more and cleaner air underneath the car, which leads to more downforce. Other teams followed and it became the new standard design for F1 cars. The designs became more extreme and in 2011 almost every team had the highest possible nose. With a maximum height of 625mm above the reference plane, these high noses were even higher than the side impact structure and became a real threat for the driver in case of a T-bone crash. So the regulators changed the maximum height of the forward section to 550mm in 2012 but kept the maximum height of the survival cell at 625 mm. So the teams did this. They kept the maximum allowed heights of the noses to get more air underneath and that created this huge step on the nose. But on the other hand, noses were a bit lower now which made the car safer. In 2013, the FIA kept the regulations the same but allowed a so-called vanity panel to cover the ugly step. It was only a quick fix and the goal was to completely rewrite the front bodywork regulations for the 2014 season where the cars would change dramatically anyway because of the new turbocharged drivetrains. In the end they didn't rewrite the regulations but significantly changed article 15.4.3. The beginning stayed the same and it always required a 9000 square meter cross sectional area after 50 millimeters of the most forward point. They do that so the cars can have a round nose. And they said, no part of this cross section may be above 500 mm above the reference plane. So pretty straightforward. In 2014 they changed from the cross section to this cross section. So it's absolutely clear which cross section they are talking about. Remember F1 engineers are cheeky monkeys. And the significant part is that they now say the center of area should be no higher than 185 mm. They use center of area so designers are free to use different shapes, but they can make sure noses are not going too high. And the third part makes sure that the lowest point of a cross section is not getting too low, which could push the center of area lower and create something like this. So the center of area is low, but the nose is still high. So what did these two additions mean? It basically meant that you just need some kind of structure with this cross section in this height but it didn't mean it had to be the crest structure. So for the teams one pretty obvious solution was to just keep a high nose, which is the crash element, and to create a structure with the minimum cross-sectional area in the required height. Seven of the 11 teams went for this solution and you can pick your favorite. The difference with the Caterham nose here was that their forward element was structural because it held the front wing. One very different solution came from Ferrari and Mercedes. They designed a short, low nose which was crash element and holding the front wing at the same time. The idea was to design it with round edges so air could flow around it and still provide enough energy underneath the monocoque. That was an a bit more complex design task and it looked like someone stepped on their nose. Unsurprisingly, this solution didn't provide as much air as others and they later changed to different concepts. McLaren used a mixture of a lower nose and forward element. And the most bizarre nose came from Lotus. The Enstone team figured it would be a good idea to extend both front wing mountings further forward. If you have two cross sections, each one of them can be smaller, giving you less aerodynamic disturbance. They then made one side around 50mm shorter than the other, so at the point 50mm behind the most forward point, the second cross section helps to reach the mandatory 9000 square millimeter. Advantage is that the center flow is pretty unobstructed, disadvantage is that the car looks like that. Also other teams confirmed to have looked at that solution before but decided against it. In 2015 the FIA learned from this and added a lot more requirements to article 15.4.3, making it a lot longer and the car is a bit prettier. The article now makes sure there can only be a single cross section and it gives the teams more required cross sections at different points behind the most forward point. 
So all in all we can say that if you stayed an F1 fan after the 2014 season with the most ugliest cars ever and the extreme change from high revving V8s to turbocharged V6 with all their reliability and sound issues, nothing can shock you anymore. Which one was your favorite ugliest nose of 2014? Let me know in the comments below and check out my other F1 videos for more.